and religion. Religion is is a scoreboard. It's saying, hey, when I do good, uh, God owes me. When I do bad, I owe God. Mm. Well, both are a lie mm. because the truth of the matter is is that you could never do enough good things to make God love you anymore. And really, you can't do enough bad things to ever say that God can't save you or give you grace. Sin is equal for all of us. Sin is not about a mistake. Sin is not even about um, doing something. Sin is an identity that we were born with. Um, I'm a sinner, therefore I sin. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I didn't become a sinner because I sin, sin. No, I was born into sin. Mm. Sin means to miss. Mm. What is the mark we're talking about? It's the glory and the standard of God. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3 tells us. So what that does is that levels the playing field, that the word all in Greek, it means all, everybody. <laughs> so my mom, yeah. whatever person you've got in your mind that seems too far from God. No, no, we've mm. all sinned. We've all fallen from the glory of God. So we're all in need of saving. We're not in need of good mm. principles. We're not in need of another self-help talk. We're not in need of another best-selling book. Those things are nice. I'm all about those things. But we are dead in our sins. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And I think what ends up happening mm. is it's kind of like the disciples. You know, they're with Jesus. They've got Jesus in their midst, and they start getting into this kind of pecking order of going, who's the greatest? Like, that's just what mankind does. <laughs> After who's the greatest? We all want to measure and compare ourselves. And it's a very, very dangerous conversation because when I begin to compare myself, one of two things is going to happen. Either I will become entitled. And I will become self-righteous where I think that I'm in tie because of my knowledge, my good deeds, or even worse at times, I begin to resent <clears throat> someone else. I feel less than, and I'm robbed of my contentment mm. because I'm not at the same place as they are. The truth of the matter is, is that our identity comes from Jesus, that when Jesus died on the cross, paying the penalty for our sin, and then he freely, here's that word, the goodness of God, gave us a new identity in him. And the reason why this message is so very important, because this is what Jesus died for. Jesus didn't come to make us good boys and good girls. Jesus came to take us from being dead little boys and dead little girls and make us fully alive in him, which is that way, the abundant life in Christ, not just in the here and now, but in the eternal spectrum. And I think what's happening right now that's very exciting is that people are grabbing a hold of this message, not of one of behavior modification but truly a message of heart transformation, which is the gospel. It's an inside-out change. And anytime we start playing sin and comparison game, it's going to lead towards religion. It's going to rob us of receiving from Jesus. I can't achieve Jesus. I can only receive from him. And when I try to start achieving, well, guess what I'm doing? I'm going all the way back to the Garden of Eden and how sin entered the equation. Why did sin enter the equation? Because Adam and Eve were not okay with just simply receiving dominion of the garden, receiving relationship with God. Instead, they were tempted by the snake in the same way that you and I are tempted today. God doesn't want you to be like him. They were trying to achieve God-like status in the garden. They were trying to get there by their own merit, by their own works. And when they did that, they stopped themselves from receiving from God. And that's when sin entered the equation. You and I, we get the chance right now to herald good news. Eden is back open for business. Jesus Christ defeated sin, defeated death, died on a cross, paid the ransom for my sins, resurrected from the grave, sent us the Holy Spirit, established his church. And the best news is he's coming back one day for those that have received his grace. And this is what we're obsessed with sharing and preaching and letting people know. I always think it's funny when people of any sort want to start like playing the religion game because it's like me talking to LeBron James about jumping high. <laughs> if, the, if the measure is a 10 foot rim, LeBron James is going to win that every time. Yeah, he can jump much, much higher than me. But as soon as we change the standard to be the moon, yo, LeBron and I are in the same camp because neither one of us are coming close to the moon. And that's really what the gap is between us and God. Okay, you got that better than me. You got that better than me. But, yo, the standard's the moon. And you're just jumping higher than Oof. me. We bridge. 
we need a reconciler. His name is Jesus. And that's what we're after, um, Matt and Lori. That's what we're trying to share. And that, that is the good news. And I think when you ask, how is this goodness message? Why does it feel new? It's because people get caught up in religion and they forget the simple gospel. Jesus Christ came, took everything that I deserve so that I could get everything that he deserved. Let that message ring loud and clear. Go tell it on the mountain. Come on. It is good news and it needs to be heralded and it needs to be shared. 